Now that's compared to maybe 15 minutes with Blackboard. But what's resulted has changed my whole attitude towards what can happen online. And this is simple. This is a, a humble forum. It's not that different from a PBS, except it's a lot prettier, it's a lot more interesting, and it begins to have these personally meaningful things that I think go a huge way uh, towards making this experience unbounded. Uh, even to the extent of something very small, you can quote somebody else very, very easily. Never could do that very well in uh, Blackboard. Okay. This is a blog. The blog runs on a hosting service purchased by the English department, English Linguistics and Communication Department at Mary Washington. The platform is WordPress multi-user. At the time we started this, it was costing $7.95 a month. And we have a fellow named Jim Groom uh, at, in the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies at Mary Washington who set this up and administered it. Uh, and we began experimenting with class-wide blogging. This blog comes from a course I taught in the spring of 2007, uh, which is an upper level film studies course. And I decided, maybe this is part of the pathology of intensification, I don't think so. I said it'd be interesting to get real writing from my students instead of a canned paper. So I asked them to write their final papers on their blogs. They had been blogging all semester long. It was pretty specific how I would like them to encounter this requirement, but I didn't have specific blogging assignments. Suffice it to say that they would be rewarded in a way I'll share with you in a second if they had blogged consistently. So I asked them to put their final papers on their blogs in two parts. The first part had to engage with a particular object of analysis and had to include at least two of the essays in the critical reader that we had used that semester in some substantive way, which I was happy to discuss with them. The second part we'll get to. In this part, you can see, oh, what's different about this? The blogging platform is multimedia friendly. Why? Because it's a blogging platform. <laughs> WordPress is there to plug stuff into. Video clips from YouTube, audio clips, images. Did I teach them to do this? No. Did all the students know how to do this? No. How did they learn? From each other. How? Because it was observable. They were publishing it all. It was all out there. This is still there. You can find it on the web now. This was part one. This was part two. Here's where things got really interesting for me. We turn now to my fellow bloggers and face their decisions and implications on the matters of God, reason, purpose, and Vernon, Florida. The most interesting argument concerning any aspect of the film is found in Robin's post. This is Robin's post she wrote when we were doing the unit on this film. Here's where the reward came in. If you were engaged, and you blogged regularly, you became a vital resource for the other people in the class who would, in the second part of the paper, link to the work you had done as a critical resource they would engage with. In other words, the students would interact with each other the way I want them to interact with books in the library, but they don't. They just kind of come back and report on what they found there. So this really opened my eyes. One of Ben's blog posts concerning Morris's film touched on an issue relative to this subject. He may have been relevant. That of the importance and so forth. Many of them did this. This drew them together into a learning community. It made them understand that recording the progress of their learning was learning itself. And those resources that are created when they're first groping with a topic are not necessarily to be wadded up and thrown away. Those are things to be consulted and used later because the understanding is already taking place. That was spring of 07. April 2007, just before the exam, was the last time Brad posted in a blog for this class until March of 2008. For reasons that are partly explicit, partly idiosyncratic, and maybe mysterious to Brad himself, he decided to start blogging again. He missed it. But wait a minute. That was for that course. That course is over. He experienced the platform for publication in the course as a personal space of learning and publication. It was natural to him to go back to that space when he wanted to keep on writing, which he is still doing. 
last post was October 13th, just three days ago. Who's he writing for now? Himself, the world, anyone who's interested. Oh, that was kind of the audience, even in the course. I was just there to help on site at that time. WordPress multi-user blog, still up and running. Where did the picture come from? He chose it. The blog's customizable. Where did the title come from? He chose it. Published October 13, 2008. Published. Not submitted for a grade. Not handed in. Published. And on he goes. He is not alone. This summer, I told the seminar in John Milton, I created what I call a blog aggregation page. You could think of it as a portal, but it's a portal with a difference. What I wanted to do was to dust for cognition prints in front of the students. So I thought an aggregation page would be a great way for me to show the students their own activity of attention and addressivity. It was pretty simple to put together because this stuff is made to be syndicated. It's made to be republished. So this was a master blog page, aggregation page, where I would republish each of the students' blog posts, turn off the comments so that if you wanted a comment, which they needed to do, you had to go to the original blog. But here you could see the activity. You could see the comments that were being generated. You could see the delicious feed, which is a social bookmarking service. As they would find things on the web relevant to class, they would tag them with the class tag. As they did that, they would show up here. Oh, and this, uh, let's see, where is it? The Global War on Taylorism? When the fellow who wrote that piece on the web saw that our class had linked to him, he came and commented on my blog. And I shared that with the class. Oh, observable? Yes. To whom? The world. The people you've linked to. Persistent? Yes. Intimate? Yes. So intimate that Madeline, who was in that seminar and blogged, who was in a course in the fall of 07 with me when she began this blog, is still blogging. She's changed the title from MK's Writings to Madeline May Write. And now she's over in Bath in the UK. This is her blog for her study abroad. When this blog came online, she was discussing Beowulf, Chaucer, and Tom Jones. Actually, Joseph Andrews. Why didn't it stick with the course? Why didn't it stick with the learner? Because it was observable, persistent, intimate. 